right, um, then we move on to the next part uh, of this session, uh, which is the Praise User Forum open discussion. At the very end of the session, there's also an important uh, logistical announcement, a brief one from Mario Lein. Uh, so I just wanted to give a heads up about that as well. Uh, but before that, we have an open discussion about uh, the Praise User Forum and yeah, basically very much um, about um, yeah, general use of the Praise and perhaps also EuroHPC resources as well as the future of the Praise User Forum. Um, as part of that discussion, I would like to invite one other member who's uh, physically present today from the Praise User Forum Committee, uh, Gabriel Staffelbach, uh, to the podium. Um, and in addition, we also have uh, two persons on hand to answer questions in, related, uh, in relation to uh, access to Praise or EuroHPC resources. Um, uh, Van Vangelis Floros from EuroHPC is present here um, in the hall, and he's happy to answer questions. Um, that can emerge later on. And on the praise side, um, my understanding is that Florian Beberich um, is around here. He presented earlier today. And of course, um, uh, Andrea, Clara, and um, Chris Nashki uh, are also here to, to answer questions. Um, okay, so um, with that, I would like to just do a bit of an introduction about the Praise User Forum. So if the um, slides are ready, Let's see, yeah, very good. Um, because it's been three years since we had a, a Praise User Forum session in person. Um, so a little bit of a recap is in order. Um, I don't know what the three years have been like for you, but for me, it's been extremely hectic. Uh, I did come out with a completely new simulation code, uh, but in any case, a little bit of a recap, I think, is, is very useful. Um, let's see, oh, I have this device. Let's see if that works. That's, that's the highlighter. Is that the next slide? No. Um, haha. Green arrow, green arrow. Let's see. Uh, this one. Yes, excellent. Okay. So, um, <laughs> apologies for that. I prepared everything except the, the little remote. Um, so, yeah, short introduction. Um, the user overview I'm going to do particularly briefly because there was a really good user overview earlier on. So, I'll just skim over whatever I have, which is much older. Um, but what is important is that um, this time we have two g open discussions, not one. So normally we would have an open discussion about general matters, which is about, you know, HPC usage at large for praise resources and throughout Europe. But there is a second one, because as you have noticed from the previous conversation or the previous uh, presentation, we're in a bit of a period where there's both praise and your HPC. But at the moment we're defined as the praise user forum. Um, but obviously the ecosystem is changing and it's changing quite uh, dramatically. And that also has consequences for us as a user forum. So the second open discussion is exactly about that, about okay, what, would be, what could be the future role for the Praise user forum um, in the context with Praise, which is uh, of course m moving its emphasis uh, a little bit more towards uh, support and, and services, um, but also in relation to your HPC. And, um, We've had short, brief discussions online with various organizations, but at the end of the line, it's the users that matter most, so we think it's best to have an open discussion about that here. Uh, and then the first open discussion is about the general matters. All right, so what is the role of the Praise User Forum today? Well, essentially, it's a communication channel between the user community and the resource providers, um, in, in this case, particularly Praise. But it's also a forum in which users can share experiences. And people can do that online by contacting us, but also during this very session. And uh, one of the important roles of the user forum is to actually get a lively session of user feedback during the HPC Summit Week or during the, the praise days. In addition, uh, from time to time, we organize user fora. We give or attempt to give users uh, a voice in the Euro HPC debate at large, uh, try to clearly articulate their interests and also vouch for them and support them. And we report back to praise. We report about the identification of user problems, uh, but also recommendations to try and better meet uh, the needs of praise users. Now, in terms of user forum membership, first of all, the user forum rep represents all the research users for praise resources. But we have a smaller group, which is the user forum uh, steering committee, and um, those basically actively communicate with each other. Now, 
anyone who has used Brace Resources within the last five years can be considered to become a member of the user forum committee and the user forum. And uh, the program committee is basically drawn from the user forum at large. Um, and the idea of the program committee is that it's a diverse set of people from different disciplines in different countries. And we try to create a consensus within the user forum so that we can provide a clear message towards Brace and other organizations. And this is particularly um, important if we want to prepare proposals that we bring forward to praise on behalf of the user community. What I really would like to emphasize is that during the pandemic, it's been extremely difficult for us to recruit new members for the user forum uh, committee. And therefore, I really invite people who are interested in joining to contact uh, one of us, basically anyone in the user forum uh, committee uh, to join, because I think we're quite overdue for a renewal of membership. The current members is the following list. Um, so as of June last year, uh, I am uh, the chair of the Praise User Forum. Uh, my background is in life sciences and that is very broadly defined because these days I model um, conflict uh, driven migration and um, the spread of COVID-19 in local areas. And in the past I've also done astrophysics, materials and blood flow. Uh, so I'm a bit, yeah, all over the place I suppose. And we also have a vice chair who unfortunately couldn't make it here in person due to teaching duties, uh, which is uh, Carmen Domen from the University of Bath in uh, the United Kingdom as well. And then um, we also, um, sorry, we have the previous chair, uh, Truls Haug Bolle uh, from Denmark, uh, and Gabriel Steffelbach from Sherfax, who is here uh, in person and a range of other um, members uh, from different domains. So you see that we have members from astrophysics, plasma physics, uh, uh, engineering energy, uh, somebody specifically for HPC, uh, as well as uh, biomechanics, which is William Sellers. And William Sellers is actually attending the session uh, online. Okay, over this, this part, I'm going to skip over in favor of the discussion, but Essentially, uh, we conducted a user survey uh, back in 2019, and there are a range of things, uh, observation, conclusions we drew from there. But I will skip over these slides a little bit because there's much more recent and more relevant data that was presented earlier uh, during this event. The only thing that I would like to say is that as a user forum, we are able to conduct user surveys, um, and we are also happy to do that if users or anyone else uh, would like us to do so. Um, so yeah, there are a couple of other things uh, here. Um, what is interesting, of course, back in 2019 was that praise was seen as the only credible option for tier zero level science. Uh, and people at the time didn't really see alternatives. These days, of course, there's praise and there's your HPC, but the two very much complement each other. Uh, but I think it's still very much the case that uh, the tier zero researchers in Europe tend to rely on resources within Europe. Okay, so that is more or less uh, the introductory part that I wanted to discuss, and I very much would like to open the floor now um, for general discussion. Um, there are a couple of thoughts and points that we from the user forum uh, have articulated and, and collected, and these are more meant as sort of starting points um, rather than the actual discussion. So I will go over them very briefly. Um, we can choose to discuss these items, or other people may have their own matters that they would like to articulate, and I'm happy to prioritize those, actually. But the things that um, during our user forum committee meeting and in our interactions came to light are essentially uh, boil down to these four bullet points. Um, so the first yeah, question we had, which I think has been addressed largely by the previous presentation by the peer review officers, is about review process and grant allocations, what will change during the transition to Euro HPC. And I just want to say that that particular slide comparing the two, uh, Praise and Euro HPC, has been really useful for us um, because it shows us, okay, this is how things change and how the constraints change. There's still a couple of more detailed questions that at least I have and perhaps other users as well. And this is the moment to actually ask those more uh, detailed questions, um, if you like. The other uh, item is about common storage, data intensive, and high throughput computing. Um, so when we run pre-access scale simulations or, or analysis, um, it's going to be data intensive. It is data intensive, and there are many, many examples where people struggle 
to analyze, reuse, publish, curate the data. And yeah, do we need a common storage, um, yeah, or common infrastructure to support that? I know that there are some initiatives in place, um, but it, it does seem to be a little bit disjoint from the computing that is being offered. So uh, there are some questions around there whether that should be become more unified um, throughout, um, yeah, Trace and perhaps also your HPC. Um, then there's uh, some yeah, issues around industrially oriented projects, so open versus closed data, uh, reproducibility, how important is, is that when a project is industrially oriented. Um, it's very important for the credibility, but sometimes there are also protective measures necessary. Um, and then also the trade-off between scientific and techni technological uh, progress. Um, and last but not least, a lot of uh, users of HPC resources have codes that are not really well optimized for accelerated architectures. And tr transitioning them to those architectures is very often not straightforward. So uh, another question is how Praise or your HPC could best support applied scientists, both from academia and industry, in uh, transitioning to these kind of uh, yeah, architectures and in using the infrastructure in general. So I'm just putting these points forward as initial items to sort of stimulate thinking. Uh, but if anyone wants to raise anything in particular, or perhaps has some uh, thoughts about these points, uh, then please uh, raise your hand and, uh, and let us know. Okay, let's see. Any raised hands? Gabriel, do you see any raised hands? Ah, okay, yes, there in the front, yeah. Uh, okay, I think somebody's coming already. Uh, Gabriel, I think you can stay stay here. Yes. Yeah, you spoke about uh, yeah industrial uh, aspect from the data and uh, and the rest. Uh, I would like to have a, a, a vision of the place of industry in your user user forum. Is there industry people participating, or and can support you on on that uh, that point? Okay, um, th that, is a, that is a very good question, and that's also uh, a situation that is subject to, to change. Um, historically, um, within PRAISE, we um, represent the research users, uh, which can be academic or research, in, um, or, or research institutions that are not necessarily universities, for instance. Um, there is a separate industrial uh, forum that would advise on the industry use uh, matters, uh, but that was the way that it was set up in praise, or is set up as well. Um, within your HPC, this is very different, and the user form, my understanding is, has a much um, broader context, a much broader scope in terms of what kind of domains and what kind of groups of stakeholders it involves. Um, so this is an open question, I think, for the second open discussion that uh, I, I'm happy to, to take any input on. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just complete a bit a question about uh, for the moment uh, for the Pride Forum. It was always uh, innovative science, you could say, even if it was uh, an industrial application. Uh, so basically, we represented also them uh, in this sense. It's just that uh, the, the amount of allocations uh, that was possible for these industrial partners was limited compared to research uh, academic. All right, I also have a question online, so um, I'll do that one in between very briefly. Um, so Arnaud Volk uh, has a question, I think for the peer review officers actually. Um, he is asking, um, the Euro HPC emergency access mode was not mentioned. Can you comment? So it's, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if anyone, uh, perhaps Vangelis or one of the price review of the peer review officers. Vangelis, would you like to comment on that? Um, yeah, so, um Obviously, apart from the access modes that they were presented by the peer review office, there are a few more that were foreseen in the access policy. Uh, emergency and emergency computing are one of them. The access policy broadly refers to it without being more specific because uh, it's, it's decided per case and per situation. There are, I mean, there, there are foreseen uh, the, the possibility to, to preempt uh, existing applications from the systems in order to run codes if, uh, if there is a certain situation that uh, demands such case. Uh, 
Of course, there are certain opportunities, but the, the exact cases right now are, are per case. And uh, we, so far, we have not uh, activated any, any such uh, requirement measure, but uh, certainly it is there. Okay, yeah. I, um, having been an emergency HPC user myself, as we were doing uh, some COVID-19 simulations for local hospitals, um, I can imagine that there's a very large case-by-case -case component to this because the time frames can differ extremely. Sometimes you need to deliver in a week's time frame, sometimes in days, sometimes you have a little bit longer. So, um, yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Vangelis, for that perspective. Um, yeah, I have a question. Yes, let's see, yeah, sorry. I'm here. Ah, okay, yeah, go ahead, excellent. Yes. Um, uh, regarding the uh, sharing of, uh, of data, uh, which was one of the points in your last slide. Um, in PRACE, we have the PRACE network. You get access uh, using certificates. I know that not everyone is happy with the X509 certificates because they are sort of ugly, but at least there is a way. Um, for Euro HPC, there are many use cases where uh, scientists need to share data, not only for publishing the project data, but also, for example, if you are doing life science uh, analysis, you have the reference genomes, you want to share them. For different projects, maybe you want to share tools. There are different repositories for sharing uh, container tools. We have the CVMFS for, for CERN. So there are many use cases where we need to share data. We don't have something like your HPC network. How is this going to take place? Because we, I had discussions with other colleagues. I'm, I'm from the Lumi user support team and other colleagues from Vega and the upcoming Leonardo. We, we discussed this, how we are going to share our tools. And so far, we don't know. Either we publish them in public repositories, but is this really the way to make them public? Will we have something like your HPC, uh, uh, Praise Network in your HPC? S this okay. question we would like to have an answer for. Yeah, right? no, that's, that's, a, that's a very clear question. And of course, uh, I think many of us know that individual tools are available, but it's one thing to have an individual tool here or there. It's another thing to have, um, yeah, I guess a data, data ecosystem. Uh, Vangelis, would you like to have a comment on that? So obviously there are some operational aspects of, uh, of the UHPC systems that uh, are currently still evolving. I mean, we, we, we just put into operation uh, four uh, petascale systems last year, uh, one partition from Lumi. Uh, as, as an organization, as a GU, we rely on hosting entities, uh, competencies and uh, technical abilities to operate the systems. Um, as a GU also, we try to coordinate all these hosting entities to, to move forwards homogeneous ways to operate, to offer a common experience to, to users. But of course, we are just in, in the beginning of this process. Uh, so the idea is to have this center coordination. The idea is to start developing this kind of services that they are necessary for, uh, for users accessing our systems. Uh, we, we need to be clear that we are either owners or, of, or co-owners of these systems, that the hosting entities play a big role uh, in the operation and provision of these services, so we are not alone here. Um, and of course, we, 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 we just starting this this interaction now. I mean, this, this session here and this, and this uh, the, the, the events after so many years in confinement, it's, it's the opportunity for us to, to start getting feedback from the end users and to, to understand the needs and how to move forward. Uh, obviously, Praise and the, and the supercomputing centers that have been participating in Praise have developed all these past years uh, a, a, knowledge a knowledge base, necessary tools. They have learned to, to coordinate and communicate and work together and share resources, tools, ideas. Uh, we, we want to capitalize on that, of course. We want to take advantage of all, all this experience that has been developed in the past years and to move forward. So, um, as I said, bottom line, we are open to, to, to start getting uh, requirements, requests, ideas, 
and these are the, the, the right venues, the forums, uh, in order to, to interact, communicate, and to absorb all, all this information. Okay, uh, thanks a lot. Um, is the, yeah, I, I think he may have a, a follow-up comment, yes. Yeah, Please go ahead, a, a, yes. A, a small follow-up comment. Uh, I'll just try to be pragmatic. In praise, we have something that works. And it will be very sad to break it and start something again from scratch. I, I, I received an email as, as part of Work Package 6 that the, the, the networking service of praise now is ending and something like this. Why do we have to do this? Why, why do we have to start again from scratch? I hope that this doesn't happen because there has been a lot of great work and there should be a way to build on this work instead of reinventing the wheel again and relying just on how the hosting entities will be super efficient in communicating and coordinating because this takes a lot of overhead, a lot of time, and we don't really need that. Thanks. Okay, um, yeah, no, that, that's a very sensible comment. I think more widely, this is a, it's, it's not only about having to restart things, I guess, but sometimes when there's a break in software development, software maintenance, uh, whether it's for data infrastructure or otherwise, you also have the risk of a brain drain, that the people who are expert with these systems are actually departing because their projects are ending, uh, they are no longer employed. Um, so, I, yeah, I think that's a very legitimate concern. Uh, Vangelis, I'm not sure if you want to comment on that further. You have an opportunity to do so, if you like. Well, I, I mean, I, obvi obviously, I don't have answers to, to all the questions. Mm. W what I can say is that it's not the only aspect of, of praise uh, that is, is working and it has been working for years, being developed, and people are questioning now what is the future and if, if the, the JU is, is coming to, to break things apart. Or, and I mean, the, 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 the short answer is no. The, 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 the idea is not to break something that works. On the contrary, mm. to keep it and to evolve it and to give it more strength. Um, so this, this is our mandate, this is our, the general direction in all the things, in, including, uh, for example, training, user support, high-level support teams. All, all this, we, we, we take it, we, we consume it, we try to adopt it in, this, in the specific way that the JAU needs to operate. Okay, uh, very clear. Okay, um, are there any other thoughts? Questions, matters people would like to, to raise? I see one yeah, on the left at the back near the stairs. Hi. Um, I have one question regarding the project access. So it's basically based on what has been done in price. And uh, we know that it's a bit of complexity for the users. And do you have any plan to promote more flexible access, such as cloud services and so on, on the, on the targeted systems? Okay, I think this is probably a question for uh, Florian. Um, I have trouble locating Flo oh, Florian is there on the right. <laughs> I think the microphone is behind you. You're running away from it. <laughs> so, um, uh, this is a question also linked uh, to Oro HPC joint undertaking. In my understanding, though there are the different access modes, and um, for huge projects, as it is targeted by the project access uh, for praise or the extreme scale access at Oro HPC, it's not uh, foreseen to, to have a cloud based access. But uh, you have to see that uh, the possibilities are uh, more large uh, in, in future with the possibility to, to have smaller projects in the regular access uh, with uh, more frequent uh, cutoffs uh, a year. There will be also uh, these uh, urgent access modes and, and, and so on. Uh, I think, but this is now more on the OHPC uh, joint undertaking side. Indeed, uh, uh, cloud access uh, is uh, foreseen in the future, but uh, probably more for, for industrial usage. But if this uh, will be also then accessible, accessible for uh, scientific 
projects, I cannot tell you. Probably all HPC want to add. Okay, I think, yeah, Serge, please go ahead. To, to complement what uh, Florian just explained, um, two, two additional aspects. One is, uh, as was presented in detail uh, by, I think, Krishna Kshi, uh, we have this open calls for ICEI praise common calls, which precisely cover uh, providing uh, resources with different kind of uh, uh, access to the infrastructure, with including uh, uh, cloud-based uh, uh, thinking. So if you are into these things, you better look at that. It's for the moment indeed as uh, at a relatively a moderate level of resources, but this is really, really to make the case for these new ways to access the infrastructure. And also, as was explained by Florian in the morning, uh, we expect that uh, federated supercomputing services will rely very much on these, uh, on these services. And uh, also a comment I'd like to make, uh, Derek, you, you were referring to the uh, survey that you run um, by, by the user forum uh, years ago. And actually, I was very much surprised that the users in general were very much okay with the process uh, of applying to resources, actually. This is something you didn't report, but that was the case there. And I was expecting to have the user say, well, just, just make my life very simple and just uh, let me knock on the door and give me resources. And that's not the feedback we got from the user forum. They were very much uh, liking the structure of the, of the call, so uh, we shouldn't throw the baby with the water of the bath so, so quickly. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, of course, the, the, the survey was done amongst Praise users, um, not amongst those perhaps who want to use Praise resources but then decided not to do it. So, there, but it, it is true um, what's, what Serge says. And um, yeah, so there, there was not a huge uh, issues around the procedure at that time during that survey. Um, there is, of course, I think at large in the ecosystem, a challenge to encourage uh, more and diverse uh, application users to the ecosystem so that, you know, the proposal system actually gets heavily oversubscribed and people basically are very much interested in using the tier zero resources. Um, and encouraging that is, of course, quite a difficult endeavor. And I think there is still some length to go there. For example, if you also look at the ratio of submitted and accepted praise proposals, for instance. Uh, of course, your HPC has just started, so we do not know how many your HPC proposals have been submitted or accepted. Um, but personally, I think uh, there lies a risk there that the number of proposals that emerge could be uh, less than, than we hope for. And of course also, uh, your HPC is restricted to the Horizon 2020 countries, so to speak. So that could reduce the pool a little bit further. But I suppose only time will tell. Uh, we'll see how that happens. Uh, yes, uh, Lilith, go ahead. I'm not sure where the nearest microphone is. Um, yeah, I think one is coming from the, from the left. You're right. Hi Derek, thank you. Um, as Florian showed, now we have five pillars, including the possibilities your HPC opened up. And there, with uh, getting more users to the systems, uh, national competence centers are quite responsible for. Isn't it a um, good idea to involve national competence centers in user forum, because they are direct connection to the applicants, especially for industry. And the list of members you showed in the current user forum I actually know them since <laughs> long past. So maybe it's time to update and increase. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, ca I can only agree with that. Uh, and in terms of representatives from supercomputing centers, I think there are also many supercomputing centers where people do active research on the applications themselves. So uh, a lot of centers have blend a blend of users and experts or experts that work a lot with applications. So yeah, I mean, personally, I think there's scope for that. Um, so yeah, if anyone has particular names in mind, I'm happy to bring them forward. Um, I would like to discuss that just with the user form committee as a whole, just to double check, uh, because we're a group, of course. But I, I would, I'm certainly open for that, yes. Um, OK, uh, Gabriel, you yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to say that there might be also a link to do with the URCC uh, National Competence Centers also, to do with, so that the information really flows on the, on all the way. So that's something that, but these are rather new compared to the user forum, so. 
we need to find a way to implement this. Okay, I think I will leave this open discussion uh, at this point, until the, unless there's an important remark that somebody would like to make. Um, I don't see raised hands at the moment. Okay, because then I'll move on to the second open discussion. Um, if it's possible to show my slides. Let's see. Yeah, excellent, thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, so the second open discussion is about the future of the Praise User Forum. Um, I actually dropped the word praise here uh, because the future might be holy praise or it could be uh, a combination or, well, it, it can be all sorts of things. But just to frame that discussion a little bit uh, without, well, without trying to bias it in any way because I'm actually open to any kind of outcome. Uh, but of course, your HPC has kicked off. And, um, well, our understanding is that Praise will still provide some cycles, but it is transitioning away from mainly providing allocations to uh, mainly providing uh, user support and training, as far as, as we understood also today. Um, Praise will still do peer reviews uh, for both Praise and your HPC, so there's an important role between the user form and Praise there, even for your HPC allocations, and I think that's an important detail to, to note here. Uh, but the structure is different, right? The structure has changed. Uh, your HPC is a separate project and has a different conception of what the user forum should entail, what the scope is, which countries are amongst its users. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, Praise has a global user base. Your HPC has a user base uh, with people from the Horizon 2020 countries. But then the user forum itself is a bit broader in terms of scope of what kind of stakeholders it, it includes. Um, your HPC is in the process of establishing that super, uh, sorry, that user forum. Super forum is an interesting one. <laughs> um, and yeah, so there's this, this, this Venn diagram of two partially overlapping groups. Um, we currently mainly represent research-oriented HPC users. Um, within the user forum committee, there is a consensus that we want to maintain that focus of being a research-oriented uh, user forum, uh, also given the composition of the user forum, at least at the moment. Um, but that doesn't mean that things should stay as they are, and I think we are open to adapting to the changing ecosystem. Um, so I guess my question to myself, to ourselves, but especially to all of you, is given all these changes, how should we shape the future of the Praise User Forum? Um, and there are some thoughts related to this. So, uh, for example, what would be the best? So, starting with the Praise perspective, given the change that we are going to see in Praise 3, uh, how would the User Forum work in the best way in a Praise project that also orients towards user support? There is a role, but the role might change. The role is likely to change, and I think it's good to try and clarify what that role should be then for, for the user form. Um, the second question, I think is an important one, is whether it is uh, sensible and effective to position the user form to support both Praise and Euro HPC. Um, I think there are arguments on both sides. Um, it's, well, I think in the end, Euro HPC and Praise will have a largely over overlapping set of users. The, the vast majority of European HPC users will be users of both Brace and your HPC. But then again, there are some structural organizational differences that we need to account for, and I guess the question is a little bit, okay, does that make things very complicated? And also, uh, from the your HPC perspective, um, of course, when you start a new initiative, um, you have, you know, a different kind of conception of a user forum and how does the praise user form fit in that? Does it fit in there or does it make more sense to keep that entirely separate? And I think it's important to, to have some open thoughts about that. Um, my aim today is not to make any definite decisions today, but I think it's important to collect opinions and then liaise with everyone involved and try to see, okay, what is the best way to proceed? And the third one is sort of contingent on if we are going into the direction where we cater to both Praise and your HPC, um, what changes should we make in the user form committee? Um, so some of the, well, the situation we have at the moment is, for example, I'm the chair, I'm based in the UK, I'm, I'm Dutch by nationality, but based in the UK. Uh, the vice chair at the moment is also based in the UK, and uh, the UK is eligible for cycles on your HPC. 
uh, not for funding. Uh, so would it make sense that we have different people uh, sort of coordinating uh, and liaising with your HPC compared to those liaising with praise? So we're open to that. Um, we may want to change the scope a little bit of the user forum um, to also accommodate and fit better into the Euro HPC framework uh, of, of a user forum. Um, and I think what I want to say today is that on our side, I think the, um, the focus on research is important for us as a user forum. We can fit into a larger ecosystem of user forums and other mechanisms, but I think our expertise is very much that, that research background. Uh, but aside from that, we're very open in redefining our role within the wider ecosystem. Um, so I just wanted to introduce that discussion a little bit, and I'm now, I now very much would like to give the floor to all of you uh, to share your thoughts about what you think uh, we should head towards. Okay, yes, go ahead. I think if I may speak as a user, as a user I don't care if it's your OHPC or praise. I think we need to have a completely different view. So imagine you are a user. What you would like to get out of this user forum? You want to be heard, you want yes. to see the change. And I think you need to look at it in, uh, based on our experience in uh, one aspect, that the needs and point of view of scientific users is different from needs and point of view of industrial and public sector. So I would actually uh, separate user forum into two, scientific a user forum and industrial public sector mm. and then go from there whether it is black that's praise euro hpc or so on i don't think any user cares about it right yes um go ahead sir, gabriel yeah, i i would agree uh, only that at the moment the user base from industry is rather more limited so this kind of would trade a, a small group and a big group on one side and can create some kind of bias on this but yeah, I agree that in any case, the, the, chain, uh, the needs are quite different and it needs to be leveraged between the two. Mm. But uh, yeah, and fact, frankly, industry doesn't have that many different uh, requirements in the HPC part. It's more on the services part, I would say. It's the services that are different. And that's a question that we need to see how your HPC evolves. Uh, and as we see that they have already implemented some kind of different evaluation of the proposals for the scientific and from the industry. It seems they have taken into account this kind of, uh, of change, I could say. But yeah, the user form needs to adapt also to this change. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think Serge also wants to add a few comments. Yeah, I wanted to, to basically react a little bit on this because if, if we recognize that the needs for industry and certainly for public sector it, uh, is different, from, from academia, um, I think we should, we should tackle it not to split, but rather to embrace the differences and, 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 and in be inclusive in the way we are addressing them. Um, at least in praise or experiences that uh, with our scientific steering committee and the industrial advisory committee, even though they have very different approach to the same concerns, uh, they recognize themselves that collaborating more were bringing a lot of interesting views from, uh, from the two, two perspectives. And so to make it actually a step further, I think the challenge for the user forum and for all of us is rather to think on how do we actually cope with those that are not accessing the infrastructure for the moment? How do we actually reach out to those who are not yet there and um, that, that is true for uh, industry to a certain extent. It's certainly true to public sector, but this is true for a, m a number of other science domains, social humanities and stuff like that. So mm. I think the question to the user forum is rather, how do they manage to actually not take their user base from the existing one, but how do they reach out to those that are not yet there mm. and who would like to maybe feed some some input to the thing, and that might be industry, that might be public sector, that might be other things. Yeah, that is a, that's a very important point, actually. Um, and I think 
in the past, also as a user form, we've been more outward facing than we are these days. Um, and I think uh, we should resume that again. Uh, of course, that does place um, some obligations on us as a user form committee. But I think we are in a, in a good shape to do that. And uh, I think also if, if there is, you know, if there are new people that would like to join us, then I think we're in an even better position to, uh, to organize uh, such events. Uh, we've had, with previous experiences, uh, it was very mixed. The survey had a really good response rate. Some of the in-person events back in the days were not so successful, but I think we can try things in a different way. Um, one thought from my side in regards to the users, um, there is more than just the, the science and the industry. So for instance, with the applications that I work, one of the main users is Save the Children, which is an NGO. Um, I wouldn't want to call them industry. Um, they're not necessarily, well, they're doing some research, but I wouldn't call them a scientific institution either. Um, in other cases, we may be running simulations, but we would be doing it on behalf of health authorities, like local hospitals in London or other authorities. And I'm not in the illusion that I'm the only user out there who, who has this kind of situation. So there is also a wider ecosystem of users outside of the scientific and industry users. So I, I very much agree with trying to define a very clear, inclusive approach to that. Um, one of, the th one, yeah, one of the things that I also just wanted to highlight is that if, if, if it is split for one reason or another, uh, because there are a lot of very diverse stakeholders, then I think it's important that these user forms also have channels of communication with each other. And it doesn't have to be a weekly teleconference, but I do think it's important to have some kind of communication that allows different, if there are different organizations, to communicate with each other. Okay, I'll leave it at that, but at the back I saw that there was another comment. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead, please. So, um, first off, I just want to say that I absolutely agree with the idea that we need to have more collaboration with, between the industry and the academia. We cannot have separate organizations because they are solving sort of the same problems that we are from the academia. But my question was uh, rather a, uh, as an answer to your questions, uh, is a question to you. Um, and that is, what is the vision of the, 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 the future phrase when it comes to these user forums, what problems do you want to solve for the users? Um, is it to just bring forth their views or, or is okay. it something else? That's a very important point. I think the most important aspect uh, to all of this is that uh, we're an independent organization. We're independent from praise, we're independent from your HPC. Um, we're as impartial as, well, we are as, as human beings, uh, as, as, as members of the committee, but we are independent from these two organizations. And in the past, we've quite often had views from users that praise didn't necessarily agree with, but we bring them forward in proposals, and uh, sometimes they were accepted, sometimes they were incorporated or partially incorporated, sometimes they were not accepted at all. Sometimes people um, articulated views also in these sessions that, yeah, HPC providers are not very happy with. But we, our added value is that we provide a platform to provide that. And I think that's the benefit of having an independent user forum rather than something that is very much embedded in an overarching organization. Does that answer your question? Okay. All right. Um, we, it is sort of lunchtime, but I just wanted to see if anyone wants to have a, a, a final remark. They would like to, final thought. Yeah, at the front, uh, Anders, please go ahead. No, I just uh, wanted to take the opportunity to thank everyone for the input. I think from our side, from your HPC side, you, the user forum is something new, from, seen from our side. It, it's come into our, regulation, our new regulation. So we've been sitting here listening attentively, and, and we will start consultations in the not too distant future, uh, because we need to s establish this user forum. And, and whether there's one or whether there's 20, as we, we need to make sure that we cover all aspects of it. And again, we're back to the EuroHPC agenda is larger it, or broader in, than, than the traditional what has been done within Craze. So, so there are certain areas we need to cover. Whether that's then this user forum choosing to open up and solve that problem on behalf of, of, uh, of EuroHPC, or whether there's another venue or is still in the making. Uh, so, so this has been extremely interesting, and 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 uh, and, um, and we, we we will definitely be, be be taking this up.
Now, uh, also just back to the regulation, I do want to make, we're not here to, we're not here to tear down all the good work that has been done over, the, over a decade by many of you in this room. But on the, on the question regarding why don't we just continue to use what's there because it works, I do want to, I just, just need to make the point that the JU is governed by a regulation that makes it clear that when we distribute money, it's based on open and competitive calls. So I sincerely hope that a lot of the good work that's been done in the past will result in some really good responses when we now go forward with these calls that are in the regulation, in and around federating our systems, etc. But the regulation clearly states that's how I'm allowed to distribute money. It's, it's, it's not a given up front that just because there's a good solution, that's the answer. Now, I am sure it will be a damn good answer, and, 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 but it will need to be evaluated on its merits and chosen and then funded. Okay, very clear, thank you very much. Um, if there are no further comments, then I think there's one logistical announcement from Mario Lijn. So Mario Lijn, please uh, go ahead. But uh, yeah, just very briefly, I want to thank you all for your participation. Uh, the input has been very valuable, so I'm really grateful for that, myself as well. Again, if any of you want to join the committee, let me know, let Gabriel know, or any other of the members. We're really keen to have uh, some new members on board, so please do let us know. And thanks uh, a lot for joining. Mm -hmm.